welcome to learning partner so in this particularly long video we will be seeing how we can create an hospital booking up appointment app and it will be a product so before some days i have released a video where i have created the same thing but it was designed for a particular hospital but now we need to convert that as a product means just the example i'm taking is like the practo so many of you have must have used practo or some have at least know like what is practo so practo is a application where we can book an appointment let's say till way so but the basic way is hospital register on register themselves on the practo then as a patient we search particular hospital and we can appoint also we can book an appointment there also so basic things whatever there are we will try to cover so let me just show you the flow chart so if you can see we will have a website and on that website we will have a registration form for the hospital from there hospital will be able to register to our application then once admin approves the hospital registration they will get their login so here you can say only two roles are, only two roles will be there super admin means us we are developing this product so uh, we will be super admin then another role will be hospital roles in hospital role what they can see they can see the dashboard like uh, dashboard will be analytics like what number of uh, total patient uh, daily history and everything then they can create an appointment and they can see the patient list they have uh, whatever the patient uh, still now they have visited all the patient list will be there another role will be login so here this is the super admin login so here also we will have the dashboard we can see what number of hospitals are registered with us right so that in the hospital login you can see you cannot once any hospital login he can only see the data or whatever the pages he has access to because he cannot see the data of another hospital or he cannot see the another hospitals also right so in the super admin login only he will uh, we will be able to get to see all the hospital then we can see appointments booked by all the hospital and we can see all the patient registered to all the hospital so this is just simple flow the same flow we will have in the practo also but in a very detailed manner right like what kind of diseases we have various doctor specification cities and everything but we are not going into detail because if we go into detail it will be very big application but we just want to cover the basic thing so this is just a mini project idea we will be focusing now this is a flow chart which i have already explained now coming back to the database like obviously the application is going to be with the api we cannot do whole thing with the uh, what do we say json file or with the local storage or session storage so we need a api so this is a sql database so in that i just have three tables hospital hospital details appointment detail and the patient detail just the three tables are there which will figure out us the whole application these are the three tables let me show you the columns also so hospital table so hospital table contains these are the field name address the basic things which we need and again user name and password will be there then we have appointment table so in the appointment table appointment id patient id uh, patient we are storing in the another table we can store it over here also but again duplicate data will be there if one patient visit the hospital again so we will have same kind of data sitting over there in the appointment table so that's why we have created patient uh, we have we are storing patient in another table its first visit narration is done appointment number it will be auto generated and the hospital id hospital id is a foreign key like this appointment is for which hospital then in the patient also again we have the hospital id and the patient basic detail these are the table then apis i am i am developing with the net core so these are the various apis i have created so some of the patient APIs are also there, add, update, delete, operation, appointment, appointment APIs are also there and the hospital API. So these are the various APIs I have. We will be consuming this in the web uh, Angular application and all the APIs you can see over here in the Practo hospital, whatever the API tables we have decided uh, seen, all APIs we are going to need to interact with those tables are here. Now, 
I have created a repository. The name will be Practo hyphen Angular. So now I need to clone this. So it is not saying. Okay, let me just get another browser. There I have created it. GitHub. So I need a clone URL. So let's go repository. So this is my repository. This is a clone URL. So let's copy it. Now I need to clone this repository or first we will create the project. Then we will initialize the repository into that. There are two ways. Either you can create a new repository, new clone. Uh, first you can clone the repository, then create a project inside that. Or you can create a folder and then initialize the repository into that. So both ways are self-explained over here. So let's go to this is the project for Angular 17 again. So I will be using Angular 17. But uh, in the video also, I will be discussing like uh, if you are if you are targeting for the older version, what changes are there? So if you are seeing if you don't know like or if you don't have Angular 17 installed in your system, still you will be able to complete the whole project by following the instruction. So now here I have to create a new project. So ng new the project name I will be giving just like the repository name. So facto hyphen Angular. So it will go over here. Let's enter. This video will be a detailed one, not just for considering the fresher. So I just have to uh, say no because I don't need the server side rendering. Let's enter. So let me just cancel it because I have a node module of copy already there. So I don't uh, create the node module in, in every project. I just create a reference of that node module. So what I was saying, like this project is not intended for the fresh so after creating a uh, shortcut of ng model uh, node model and everything the project is ready so based on the flow chart so i have created the co component also just to save the time so to create the component i have used just the command like ng generate component and component name so these are the components I'm going to need. That is appointment list. Here, uh, this appointment list will be uh, the same component we will use to show the appointment list also. And again, we will have a form also to create new appointment. Dashboard, a single component, which will be for hospital also and for the super admin also because both role have the dashboard. So if you can see, hospital also has a dashboard and super admin also dashboard. So one component only we will be using just condition wise we will hide home component the component which will be a uh, in this component we will have a registration form for the website then hospital list this component is only used for the super admin because only super admin will be able to see all the hospital list then new hospital this is just a component where we will have the form then patient list so this is also a component which will be accessible to hospital as well as the super admin but if super admin logged in he will be able to see patient of all the hospital but if particular hospital login he will be able to see the patient registered with him only now again i have created service also so it is up to you like you can create one service as we have very few api call so either you can create one service and keep all your api call functions into that service otherwise you can create multiple also so just for an example i have created appointment service and a hospital service. So all the API call related to hospital, I will put it over here. And all the API call related to appointment, I will put it over here. Then I have created a constant also here. I will create, I will be storing all the API endpoints name. And I have installed node module, on, uh, sorry, environment folder also. So to install the environment, just write ng generate environments. It will create this folder and it will update the app no, angular.json as well. So this is the basic structure which I have created. Now we have to start. So if we see after creating component, the next task is we have to create the route. So when we create the Angular 17 project, by default we don't get by default we get app route.ts. So this is where we have to create the routes. So first route I will be creating is for default route. So path will be empty. Then redirect to 
I will redirect to home component. That will be my website landing page because this is not an admin application. This is we are designing as a website structure. Then path my strategy. Cool. So this is my default route. After that, we need our path and now home component route. Second component. After that, we are going to need, let's say appointment list. What are the components we have created and those components which we are going to access by route, all we have to create. Let me just pause it for now. So whatever the components we have created like that, I have created the route. So you can see home, appointment, dashboard, hospital, patients, new hospital. So these are the all components we have created. After that, in app component, currently when we create the Angular project, by default, we get something this course, right? So we need to remove this and we will just put the router outlet over here. Now we can use the router outlet because in app component, you can see router outlet is imported. So now in Angular 17, whatever the thing you have to use, you have to first import it. So if we have to use the router outlet, you should import it. Now, so if we save it, let's try to run the project. So NGS enter. Let's see if we, we should get to see the default route. So default route is home component. So we should able we should be able to see the home component. So let's run localhost 4200. Let it compile. Let's reload. So now you here you can see home component is getting successfully rendered. Yeah, extra bracket was there. So by default, if we don't have anything, home component is loading. So let's say, so you can see by default, it is navigating to home component. That is because of the default route. Now, we don't need anything this. Now in home component, we are going to create a simple website kind of page, but that I will, I'm not going to do it. But in home component, we are just going to have a registration page. So this is the HTML I'm going to use. And here we will have a registration page for the hospital. So as we have discussed, like we are just trying to make a copy of Practo. So if we see their website, there will be some website kind of thing and somewhere we will have a form of registration for the hospital. So not in a detail, I'm going to do that, but let's consider like in home component, we have a website and somewhere we have the registration form. So likewise in the home component, you can see we have two section call six and in the other call six, we have the form. So let me just get this. Let's just save. So you should be able to see the, so now on the home page you are able to see a landing page, but here we have to get our registration form for the hospital. Let me see if we have any CSS. Okay, BG dark. That's why it is coming like this. So let's remove this BG dark. Let's remove this H hundred also. Why it is looking like this? Okay, let it be. So let's say we have a home page. We have a website. In that, we will show our old content, like what is pra, what is this application, what are the packages we have, several kind of thing, whatever we do in a website. But somewhere in that website, we will have a registration form for the hospital to register, so that they can register and we will allow them to use our application. So the registration form, I'm moving it to the new hospital component. So this is where I'm moving all the form in my new hospital component. This component I will use into my home component. So this is the selector. So app new hospital. Now we are trying to use one component into another. So in we are trying to use new hospital component into home component. Let's see if it works. So here only you will get the compilation error that this is not a recognized. 
you can see it's not a node element now here comes the new feature of angular 70 so we have created angular 17 project so all components are by default standalone so now standalone means these are independent components so if you have to use one component to, into another so obviously you need to import it so in a home component we need to import our new hospital component let's save now here you can see error is gone now if we see so you can see beside the image we are uh, getting the registration component properly rendered let me just show you how it does it render so you can see in the call six we have this component successfully rendered so when it comes to stand standalone component whatever you use you need to import it so I, in home component, I had to use the new hospital component. So I had to add the import statement. So after adding the import statement in my import, then only I am able to use it. Now let's see what are the things we need to we need have for the registration. So API will be at see API so dot in let's take load. Now we have just copy pasted the bootstrap prompt from the website but now we need to make changes as per the things we have in the hospital registration form it is not loading so here are the apis so we need to see what are the things we have in the hospital registration so you can see these are the various things we have in the hospital registration like hospital name address city contact number owner name Con owner contact number email id username and password so just the basic thing we need to get the date uh, to allow hospital to register themselves to use our application as this is going to be product so we have to allow our customer to use it so before using it before they have to use it they first need to register it now so we will just modify our form so our new hospital form is in this component so let me just modify the form a little bit so according to the field we have in the registration of hospital i have just created the form so we have hospital name contact number owner name contact number email id city address username and the password because we have to ask hospital to enter the username and the password that they are going to use to log in right now ui is complete now we have to on click of register we need to integrate the api so if we see the api endpoint let me just try it out let me just check also if API is working fine. Yes, API is working fine. So now all API will have up to this as common. So rather than writing this in every API call function in service also, we can put this into our environment folder. So we have to go to environment folder. Here we will write API endpoint or API URL because that is not an endpoint and make sure you are copy pasting this same thing in both the environment folders like this you need in the development also and then in the dot .tx also sometimes we do in the environment dot .ts and when uh, when we deploy we don't get it because whatever environment specific things we have to put it the variable name should be same but the values can be different so make sure in both the files you have it now coming back to our service so this is, uh, we are trying to create an API call for the registration of hospital. So here we have to do this. Now, so in previous version, if we have to make API call using HTTP client, so we used to use, uh, we used to import HTTP client module in the app module, but now we don't have it. So what we have is app config. So here you have to write provider HTTP client like this. So first thing I'm doing this. After that, in hospital service, I have to create private HTTP colon HTTP client. Now I can use it. Now here, first API call that will I have to create is register hospital. Let's get the API endpoint. Now, if you see, this is my API endpoint. So this I will be keeping in my constant. So rather than putting everything over uh, in the URL, we have to uh, use the constant. So in API con here, constant will 
is there. So here again, I'm creating API endpoint. Right here, I will be adding all the API endpoint because constant file is a generic, right? We can have a validation message, regular expression, everything, whatever we are going to use over all the application that we can keep it over here. So just again to separate it out, I'm going to, I have created one more property that is API endpoint and here I will be creating all my API endpoint. When you give the name to the constant, make sure you are giving it in the cap capital to separate out, to separate the words, you can use underscore. Now my API endpoint is add new hospital. So let's create add new hospital and the value will be this now now in hospital service here this function is going to return the data type of observable because we are going to make an api call so colon observable currently just i'm giving any but we will create class or interface for this return this dot http dot method we will be using is post now here we need the API URL, but API URL we have kept it in the environment folder. So environment dot API URL plus we need the method name because in API in environment folder we have kept our URL up to practo URL. Let's add a slash over here. After that we need a actual API method name also. So here we have to use constant dot api endpoint dot hospital so this will create our actual url after that we need to pass the object so this function is going to be post so we need to pass the object also so obj colon any and this whatever the object we get as a parameter that we will pass it over here so this is our api call function but now we should not use any as i have uh, mentioned in the earlier video like we are going to try to use all the proper concept what we should use so instead of using any we will be creating class for the same so in core folder i am creating a folder that is classes and inside the classes i will create a file let's say hospital dot ts or let's make hospital dot model.ts just a naming lecture we are following and here we will create a class so export class hospital and what are the things we have now just a quick uh, like these are the properties we are going to have so we need to convert this into an javascript object so you, are, you can use json to ts convert converter and you can pass the object and you will get it converted so i'm just passing it over here let it load what is taking time So this is the website here we have to keep our json so immediately you will get it converted like this according to the whatever the data you so you can see zero is over here so it has uh, added the data type as number so let's copy this let's paste it over here now after everything we need a comma so let's just add that okay semicolon equal i think so again that we will do it string we have to replace with string semicolon now it is uh, saying like it has no initializer so we have to add a constructor and in constructor we can initialize all these properties or even if you don't do, want to do that you can just add a question mark so you can see so these are nothing but uh, what we can say either it can be uh, null or empty right so just 
this is just a quick shortcut, but you should ignore that. All the properties, whatever we have, you should in, uh, initialize those like this. So hospital array will be initialized to zero. Then all the string properties will be initialized to empty. Let's say current your application is going to be used in a particular city. So you can hard code it here. So we don't, we won't ask user to manually write it. Let me just initialize all the properties. So this is how we have to initialize all the field we have in this particular class. Now, instead of any, we have to use this class into our service. So here also, so now we need to add the import and here also. Sorry, uh, the API call, because this function is going to return the data, whatever we get. Now, if we see my API, all APIs are going to return a specific object. So that will be message, result, and data. So we have to create an interface for this same also. So we will create an interface. Just like class, we can create interface also. Export interface API response model message. That data type will be string. Then result. With data type boolean all api are going to return the same uh, data just the data is going to be dynamic so here i am keeping as any now this will go over here like this and once we specify the data type over here after post also you need to add the same data type like this so now you can see error is gone so this is how your API call function should look like when you are actually trying to implement the advanced term set and everything. Your function should have a properly written type, what it is going to return, what object you are going to get, like this. Your API URL shall, should come from the environment file. Your API endpoint name should come from the constant file, like this. So our API call is done. Let me just close everything. Now we have to move to our component that is new hospital. <clears throat> so in new hospital, we have already created the HTML form. Now we have to create the object. So object only we will create over here. So hospital. Now when you create the object, normally what we do, we create like this hospital OBJ colon. But now we have created the interface. So now instead of any, you have to use the same. Let's use that. So this is a class. So we have to like write like this and we have to initialize also new hospital like this. And this import statement also we are going to need. Now, again, one more thing. Now, you know, like this variable which we have created, we are going to use it in the HTML to bind using the ng model. So we can declare it as a public. By default, it is a public. But as a good standard, uh, good programming standard, you should add a public or the private. If you are going to create a variable, which you are not going to use in the HTML. So rather than uh, making it just like a public by default, let's say private is show. Just a variable I'm using Boolean. So let's say I'm not going to use this variable in the HTML. So we can keep this as a private. So this variable we cannot use it in the html so whenever you uh, work for an actual industry project on anywhere these are the rules you will get to know or every project has some different set of rules you will get to know once you start working on the project so public on the private you should add on on the variable declaration now this variable we have to bind to all the elements we have created so now again here i'm going to do a shortcut thing everywhere i'm going to need a or everywhere on all the input element, I'm going to need an ng model. So here I'm just going to write ng model equal to this and dot. So this is going to be constant. So I, what I'm doing, I'm just copying this and I'm going to replace this with this. So it will just save us some, some time. So this is all duplicated. So now we just need to remove. So now you can see I just have to get the proper thing. 
this is hospital name. Now again, you can see the benefit of creating so uh, instead of going for any, this is the benefit you get IntelliSense properly now because we have created a class and we have binded, uh, we have strongly typed our variable names. So you get everything IntelliSense. Now you just need to bind it contact number. Then this is owner name. Owner contact number. Very email then we have city then we have address and we have username and the password so username and last thing password now you can see still error is there why would do we have the error as in we are trying to use the ng model. So your error you can see cannot bind ng model since it is known property. This error we used to get when we are trying to use the ng model without importing the pounds model. So again, same thing. If we have to use the pounds model, so in the component itself, we have to add the pounds model in the import section. Now you see error is gone. Let me just see one. Let's check if we have error in anything in the console. Let's open the console. Yeah, so no error is there. This is this you can ignore. This is just for the Favicon icon. Now on click of register, we need to make our API call. So in the service, we have already created a uh, API call, right? So that we have to use. So in here, we have to create constructor, and in constructor, we will create our API call function. So first, private, we have to create an object of our API call service. So that is hospital. SRV hospital service. Now here I will create a function on register. Now, so this dot hospital service dot only one function is there currently, but for this function, we need to pass the object of type hospital. So this object only we need to pass. So this dot hospital object, we have to subscribe from bracket result colon. Now this function is going to return the data type of API response model. So you can see, so same thing we have to add it over here also because we know like this is going to return a data type of API response model. So we can, instead of any, we have to add like this. This is a success and after the curly bracket, we have to add error callbacks also. So if anything breaks from this service, this error block will execute. Then you can show whatever the error you have got. Alert, I'm just going to pass because we will get the object. So I'm just going to convert it into string format. So whatever the object we have that we can show. Error. So this is a call catch block for if anything breaks from the service call. And once we get the API call here, we will add check like result dot result. If it is true, we will show the alert box like API call is success or hospital regist registration success. And if we get any error in else block, we will show that again alert and whatever the message in result dot message, you will get the error whatever if API is, uh, API caught any error that you will get it in the response in this field. So that only you need to display. Now let's try if uh, registration is successful or not. Then I will explain like how do we unsubscribe from this? Because if we subscribe that memory location will be use totally even if we navigate that is not going that memory is not going to create because when we subscribe a stream of data is continuously going to receive so we need to unsubscribe from that also so i will just explain that let's just check if api call is success or not let's try to enter a name let's just try vedant vedant here just a name we are giving 
main contact number just a dummy mobile number i'm adding owner name let's say Vedant. owner contact number again a dummy mobile number Vedant at the rate dummy dot com city let's say pune address let's say Riman Nagar. Then username. Let's say I'm creating my I'm I'm registering for my hospital, so I will uh, remember my name. So let's say Vedant, and let's say password will be one one three three two two. Just something I'm giving. Let's just paste it over here. And password is over this. Now let's try to register. So on click of register oh my god so we haven't integrated the event so we have created this event but we haven't integrated we haven't called this event on the button click let's just do that so click event will be there function round bracket again we have to fill the whole form let's do that one more time so we don't Here. Just filling out a minute up. Pune. This is the detail we need as the username and the password. We don't then password is one one three three two two so this will go over here now let's check if we get the api call as a success again i'm adding the debugger also so control p my component is new hospital dot ts and i have to add a debugger over here at line number 22 and once we get the response can they in the error block also let's test continue so here you can see in the hospital object whatever the data we have filled in the form that is available in our hospital object this only we are sending along with the api now once we do that so here we are making a call to the service function so once we continue from the component here you can see in the object we have got the same data now we are actually making the api call continue so it is in the pending mode now we have got an error. So you can see we have got an error and it goes error block got executed. Let's see what error we have. Error. Let's continue. What is the error? Let's course error we are getting. Port to double zero. Let me just test. Let me just see like on which port I have allowed this API. Sorry, so that was my bad. Actually, I have added environment slash over here, but I forgot to add over here. So that's why it was breaking. So now if we click, URL will be properly formed. So on click of register, now you can see URL is properly formed. But earlier it was, this slash was not present. That's why we had got the course error. Now you can see registration success message we have got. So hospital ID is also, seven is also, you can generate it. So basic API call we have done, but when we do like this, when we normally do the subscribe thing from the API, so what we are doing is like we are just uh, consuming the memory and we are not clearing it. So for that to hold, handle this, we have to create private subscription array. Dollar. Let me just find how it is. Subscriptions, data type subscription. Let's add the import. It will come on and it is going to be array. Let's initialize with empty. Now, whenever we are subscribing anything, so whatever we are subscribing, we need to push into this subscription. So this dot subscriptions dot push and whatever we have done, we can wrap this inside the push. Now, after uh, once the component is getting destroyed, we need to clear my subscription that this 
subscribe will be unsubscribe right so we need to import uh, the life cycle event that is on destroy we have to implement so if you see here first thing like we have to integrate the navbar so let's go to bootstrap site and in the navbar section i have got this navbar so because here we are going to need the logout and the login button so like that structure i'm just keep keeping let's copy this now our navbar will go into our home component so let's go to our home component here we will have our navbar now in home component so if you remember so in app component we have added the router router but home component is going to be our parent component so here again i'm adding the router outlet or let me think let's just check if we can do the same thing or else instead of keeping our navbar over here we can keep the navbar into our app component only let's try this this will work fine let's save and check So our navbar is in the app component and currently home component is activated. That's why home component is visible. Now, <clears throat> here, instead of search button, we have to integrate the login button. And there on the login button click, we have to open the model pop-up. And on in the model pop-up, we will have our login form. So let's copy the model pop-up code. Let's get this code. Now, our navbar is in our parent component. That is app component so there only i will keep my now uh, model pop-up also so at the end i will put my model pop-up let's remove the unnecessary things in the model body we have to design the login form so dot row call 12 label username we will need the text box to enter the password. So input, type text, class, form, control. Just like that, I'm just copy pasting this. We will need a text box for the password also. So password. Now let's change the model title, login. Now this model pop-up we have to open on this button click. So instead of search, it will be login. Let's remove this text box for now. Now on this button click, we have to open the model pop-up. So there are two ways, either in angular.json, angular.json if you have added the uh, script file also, bootstrap.js file, so directly you can use. Otherwise, second approach will be, we can normally open the model pop-up. I mean, this is a model pop-up. By default, this model has a, uh, style as display none we just have to add a dynamic style display block then model pop-up will be visible so let's do that so first i will do with the javascript code then i then we will try to convert that using view chat so that at least one new concept we can implement so click on login or let's say show login make sure whenever you are creating any function or the variable make sure you are giving the name as a descriptive because on this button click we are opening the model pop-up so that should be your function name now <clears throat> so here first we need to re we need to select that element so model is equal to document dot get element by id round bracket and here we have to provide the model pop-up id model pop-up id is nothing but this my model so let's change it to login model and this will go over here. So now, whenever we are trying to select any element by using JavaScript, so always we have to make sure like if it is not null. So that's why if model is not null, just a null check we have to add, otherwise it will throw the error. Not null, just like with whenever we read the data from the local storage, not equal to null, then we have to add a dynamic style. So model dot style, dot display and the CSS value will be block 
just like that i will create one more function to close the model pop up function so that will be close login and instead of block it will be none so that model pop up will be hidden now we did we just have to call this we already called yes so let's just save and check and uh, one more thing like in model pop up we have this close button right so here we will just call our another function to close the model pop up that will be close login here also and again we have a button to close at the bottom here also let's just say and check if we are able to open the model pop-up and close the same also so if i click on login you can see model pop-up is opening and in on click of close it is getting closed now so we need to check the api so let me just go to swagger Recto is my controller name. So login API. So for the login API, let's check just this object we have to send. So let's create a interface of that. So we are creating uh, classes. So in hospital DB, either you can create multiple model dot TS or you can create all the classes over here only. Doesn't matter. So currently I'm just creating export class user. And putting uh, and keeping my two fields that is username and the password. We have to initialize them also. And this dot user password is equal to empty. This dot username is also equal to empty. So we have just initialized the class let me just format it back now we have to create object of this class in app component so here let's remove this we don't need this user obj colon my class name is equal to new class name we need the import so if we add it over here it will suggest so we have created an object now <clears throat> In the app component, we are going to bind this using ng model. So obviously, this is Angular 17. So whatever you use, you need to import that. So here, forms model you need to import like this. So this user object, we have to bind it over here. Square bracket, round bracket, ng model. Object dot username. So this is the this is a beauty. If you create class or in the interface, you get everything intelligence. You don't have to manually type or you do the swelling mistake. That is not the case if you create a class or the interface. Now, so we have created an object. That object we have bind over here also. Now we then we need the login button. So up beside close, I will just create one more button. That will be login. Let's change the color to success and function on login. This function we will create. Now we need to create an API call also. So in the service, we have created only two uh, services, appointment service and the hospital. So login is part of the hospital only. So here I will be creating a function. So now uh, for register hospital, we have created an event like this. So just like that, I'm just copy pasting because I have already explained this. So this will be login. Now the object I will be receiving is like user. So see, it is suggesting the import also. Then now in the constant file, we need to add the login API endpoint. So I'm just copy pasting this to this. Let's change it, login. And the method name is nothing but login. Now here, instead of add new hospital, we have to use login. And the object, whatever the object we get, that we will be passing. So in the service, we have created our function for the API call. Now that we need to integrate over here. Uh, but before that, we need to create the object of that service. So constructor, round bracket, curly bracket. Now, in Angular 17, we create instance of the service like this. But we have one more way that is injectable. So I'm creating a variable. Let's say it is going to be private only and hospital service. So hospital.
एट द रेट इंजेक्ट सॉरी इंजेक्ट एंड वी हैव टू इंजेक्ट अवर हॉस्पिटल सर्विस सो यू कैन सी हियर ऑल्सो इट इज प्रोवाइडिंग प्रोवाइडर टोकन नथिंग बट वी हैव टू वी कैन एड एज वॉट एवर द डिपेंडेंस इंजेक्शन वी हैव टू एड सो हॉस्पिटल सर्विस नाउ दिस इज इक्वीवेलेंट लेट मी जस्ट नेम इट प्रॉपरली this is equivalent to what we used to do over here so private service hospital service this is nothing but equivalent to this so this uh, feature we have got i think in the angular 16 or 17 but we can use it now so this we can use it over here so this dot hospital service dot we have two methods now login we have to use and to the login we need to pass the object so that is user object dot subscribe now All API call are going to return the same data. So RDS dot API response model. This already we have created. That only we have to implement over here. Then here, so here we will add like result is true or not. If it result is true, means user API call is success and we got the uh, whatever the credential we have passed that are correct. So once user is successfully logged in, means we have got the success. then we will we have to navigate also in else we will show the error message whatever we get from the api side so alert rs dot message whatever the result we get now on the login you need to do two things first you need to store the data whatever the data you get from the login api and you need to you don't need to navigate actually we are Uh, doing this login thing in the model pop up so you just have to close the model pop up so this function close login will be over here so this dot close login but before closing the model pop up we need to store the data so we will use local storage now you can either use the local storage session storage or cookies also based on the project requirement we normally use it so set item some in some application or the some industrial application we create we store the data into service also but once you refresh that data get vanished again we need to call the api call so again it's totally based on what project and what security things they have implemented like that we need to do so this is our hospital so practo login this is the key i am giving so while storing the data into the local storage we need to convert it into the a uh, string format because we get the object we cannot store the object into the local storage so json sorry json dot stringify is the method what we have to use res dot data we need to pass like this and we will be closing the model pop up once we are closing here i am creating one more variable that will be storing the hospital but the detail whatever the hospital record we get that we are going to store it over here so logged hospital data colon hospital class i am creating is equal to new hospital i will explain this why we need this variable once user logged in whatever the hospital logged in whole data Whole hospital data we are going to get that we need to store it in this variable. So this we have to do it before over here. So this dot log hospital data is equal to res dot data like this. And this variable we will use to display the logged in user. We need to sh show like what what user is logged in. So for that we are going to use that variable. So here again let's create the button. just it will be let me just find the class for the invisible button button basic just the button or the light we will use btn light now here we will show the username so hospital object logged hospital object dot we will show email id then if user is logged in we need to show the log up button also so again i'm copy pasting this and it will be success let's add btn small to all the buttons 
So now condition will be if this logged in user data is having hospital ID, then we get to know like we have got the data. Like means user is logged in. So why it is not suggesting dot something we did wrong ng star ng this is the property we have to use equal to equal to means sorry not equal to zero means if what is the wrong over here okay i forgot so now we are we are trying to use the ng so again rule goes we have to use ngip so we have to import the common module so ngip comes from the common module so over here we have to import common module then that error will go away so now you can see i can use it so logged in username and the log up button will be visible if the in this particular variable hospital id we don't have the id as zero means user is logged in so we will have hospital id so now here we just need to show log off. And on log off, we are what we are going to do. So we just have to clear the data from the local storage. So click. Function name log off. Let's create this function. Now, once user clicked on the logout, what we need to do? First, we need to read the uh, remove the local storage data. So instead of set item, it will be now remove item. And we just need to pass the one key, like which data we need to remove. And we need to make this, we need to initialize this property as well. Hospital, we are just initializing it like this. And one more button, the, these two buttons will be visible if Hospital ID is not equal to zero, but login button will be visible if equal to zero means user is not logged in. So let's check this functionality if it is working fine or not. So currently login button is visible. Now if we click on login, let me just get the detail of the hospital we have created. Get on hospital, try it out, execute. So Vedant is the username. Let's enter it over here. Password. Okay. So here you can see space is also there. While registration, I have done that also, I think. Password. Let's inspect and let's check if API call is going over there successfully or not. So now on click of login, you can see when API call is there, we have got the data from the local storage. Oh, sorry from the api we have got the data whatever the data whatever the user detail we have passed that whole hospital hospital data we have got and here you can see in the button we can see the login button but log up button is not visible s u double c double s class name was not correct but now if we refresh you cannot see the logged in user again we will be able to see the login button this is because we are deciding the login button visible or not based on this variable. So what we did, once we log in, we store the data over here. But once we do the login, and if we, let's say we refresh, on the page load also, we need to read the data from the local storage. Then only we will get to know like user is logged in or not. So here I'm reading the data on the page load. Logged data, local storage, dot get item. And we need to pass the logged in user that is to login. So on the page load, what I'm doing to do, I'm going to check the local storage data. If in the local storage, we have the data, we know like this is a logged in user. So if, so if log data, this variable is not null, means in the local storage, we have the key, not null. Then we will get to know like the user is there. So what we need to do, we just need to assign the data over here. So this dot, but when we store the data into the local storage, we have converted that to the json.stringify means in the string format. Again, we need to revert it back to the object form. So json.parse method I have to use. And 
this same thing we have to pass it over here now let's check even if we refresh now, now we will be able to see the logged in username see we are able to see the logged in username and the log off button now in the application you will be able to see the practical login but now if we click on the log off so you can see that data got removed and again the login button is visible so we have successfully completed the login functionality one more thing if user is logged in in the nav bar he will be able to see his appointment link patient link so again we will do the same check so this check is nothing but like user is logged in if hospital id is not equal to zero so here let's add that so if hospital id is not equal to zero means user is logged in so here we will see appointment and patient And here, instead of href, we have to use router link. No, 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 route. Now, it, for router link also, it will throw the error because if we are going to use the router link, we need to import that. Let's go over here. Router link. Like this. Now, the error will be gone away. So, we have to navigate to the route. Uh, appointment so let's go to route config this is the link appointment it will go over here same thing i will just copy paste let's remove this and we have to use the patient so patients let's just save and check if we are able to properly see the component Okay, we are not logged in, so you can see links are not visible. Let's do the login with the space. What was the password? 113322. One click of login. Why it is saying wrong credential? Let's use. Yeah. So now once user is logged in, you can see the links also and the logout button. Now if we click on the appointment, you can see appointment appointment component got loaded. If we click on a patient, same component is getting loaded. Now, yeah, so we can ignore this error. So hospital registration is done. Login thing is also done. And uh, dynamic links are also visible over here. Let's remove this. This is not required for now. So we are done with the login page. Let's close everything. After that, we can start working on the appointment. Because hospital is logged in, he is able to log in also. Now he can create his appointments because this is a product. We are we are building a hospital booking appointment as a product, just like the Bracto. Now, so in appointment list. So appointment list is the component. This component is only responsible to show the what are the appointments we have. Plus, we will have a form also to create the new appointment. So let me just create the structure for that. So dot row. I will be using card structure dot call let's say eight then dot call four is there inside this call I will have card now either we can do show the form in the card format appointment in the card format or in the table let's use card only so in the we are we are creating call it and the call for so in the call it we are going to show the list of the appointments and in the call for we are going to have the form so let's create the basic card or let's google some proper card mm, let's check the bootstrap only if we can use any of their card design cards we don't have image we just have data to be visible let's try to use this so this will go over here now we just don't need the image so we can just remove this image let's save mm, but we will need a background so bg secondary i'm using why it is not overlaying 
let's add this on the card mm, that's why i don't like to waste the time let me just find it so we can use this uh, and this is again this is the bootstrap official website so i'm just copying this let's put that over here let's save yes so something is coming now now uh we can get rid of the this style in the in the call it again we will have row and let's say in one row we are going to display at least four appointments so three call three will be there and inside call three we will put our card like this over here now this is going to be iterative so this will be iterative on the whatever the appointment list we have for the logged in hospital that we will use now here in call for we are going to have the form to create the new appointment so let's check the api like what data we need to send add new appointment this is the api so here if you see name mobile number cta gender just the normal uh, things are there just hospital id we don't need to show in the form this is we are going to read from the local storage because hospital id we need to send like what are what is the whatever the logged in user is there that hospital id we need to send so let's copy this again let's convert this using online converter which is on to ts why this site take time yeah it's loading so this is the object so let's create this enter again we have to go to the model let's create the appointment class so export class appointment fields we have already created let's just add a semicolon copy paste replace with this boolean number are remaining now we need to initialize this also so let me just pause it and i will initialize all the fields so i have initialized all the fields you can see just the change like appointment date should be a date time data type so i have added that and initialized with the new date apart from that this was a boolean so i have initialized it with false hospital id we initialized with zero and the age with also zero now so this object we have to create in our component so this is my component so here i will create the object so new appointment colon this variable is equal to this let's add it over here so we have created an object so here now in the call for we have to create the form let me just save and show you like so here means the remaining side of the screen we are going to design the form so let me just save and i will just create the form So this is the form I have created. This is the same form I'm using, which I have done in the previous video of the hospital booking appointment. Now, so let me just show you the form also. So you can see this is just a simple form I have used. Instead of label, I have used the icons. You can see this is the form. Now after creating the form, we need to bind the object we have created with the respective field. So that we will do. Now again, just a shortcut method I will be using. So wherever we have the form control that we have to replace with ng model. So first I will write it over here, ng model equal to this object dot. So this is going to be common. So wherever I have class, I will be replacing that with class and this. Right, now we just need to bind the properties. So this will be name, then mobile number city just the basic patient detail we are taking age okay for time it is not there let me just copy and paste this is is first time this is a checkbox this property will get to know like this patient has visited this hospital for the first time or not again this is also remaining so let's copy now gender is there so genderly right we have two male and the female so either if we click male female should be disabled uh, people should be unselect 
So we have to group them. So for grouping, we just have to give the same name attribute over here. So gender property, just the value is different. Here you can see value is different. Your value male and the female is there. Then we have over here appointment date. Input type date is there so that we will get the calendar and the time, appointment time. The last one is narration. Still why the error is there. Okay. Now, so again, in appointment list, we are using ng model. So in appointment list, we have to import forms model. So forms model. Let's save. Let's just check if we have any error or not. Okay, so no error is there. Now on click of book appointment, we have to integrate our book API. So this is the API which we have to integrate. So let's create this in our constant first. So let goes to constant. So comma new appointment colon just this endpoint we need to pass over here that's it let's format now in the constant we have added our endpoint name now we have to go to the service appointment service we have created so uh, while creating services we have created two services one is the appointment and then the hospital so whatever the api call are there for the related to hospital that we will keep into that service but this is a related service to the appointment so here we will keep it Again, we have to create HTTP instance of HTTP instance. Now, uh, new appointment. Let's use the same thing. Just the function name will be something different. Now, here instead of hospital, we are going to get the object of appointment. Appointment. Why it is not suggesting? Yes, it is there. Response model import also we are going to need. Then observable also. So let's add it. Environment also we are going to need. Constant. Now instead of instead of add new hospital, it will be new appointment, the API input. So our service is ready. Now in appointment list component, we have to create the object of that particular service. So now here, let's create constructor. We will use the old way. So appointment SRV, appointment service. Now, so on click of that button, on click of book appointment, we have to call a function. So let's create a function over here. So click book appointment round bracket. Let's create this function. First, I'm completing the register no, booking appointment. Then we will get the appointment and then we will show it into the cart. So this dot appointment service dot new appointment why it is suggesting appointment service let me just check hmm. let's remove this this should be our function name that is new appointment only and to this function we need to pass the parameter that is nothing but object so this dot new appointment object dot subscribe res colon the data type will be api response model arrow function now here again the same thing if statement if api call is success or not that whole thing we are going to do result and else block alert res dot message we have to show and once api call is success we will show the alert box like uh, appointment created But before making this API call or in the constructor, you can see in the form we have binded all the thing apart from hospital ID because hospital ID should be go 
from reading the local storage because logged in user detail we are storing in the local storage so in the constructor we will read the local storage data so now let's go to our home component sorry in the login com uh, app component we have read the local storage data like this so let's just copy this now let's go to appointment list in constructor now instead of this i will this dot appointment new appointment dot hospital id we need to pass is equal to here we will get the parse data means object dot hospital id let's go to local storage and let's see what properties we get same thing will be there but just i'm showing you so practo login inside that hospital id so we just need to copy and paste it over here so on the page load in the constructor we will read the local storage data from that hospital id we are assigning to the new appointment and this object we are passing to the api call so let's just save it so let's say search in let's enter dummy mobile number let's say pune age 43 is the first time mail let's select the date for today let's say i want the appointment around 8 pm this is a free text so whatever or, or we can create a drop down also if we want user to select out of the option need visit let's click on book appointment so now appointment created has been success so let's select let's check so now here you can see this is the object whatever the data we have filled just the hospital id we have read from the local storage and in the response also you can see appointment id we have got around 461 because i have already some record so now like that we, we are getting now hospital means appointment is created by that particular logged in uh, Vedanta hospital is logged in and they have created one appointment but here they should see all the appointment created by them so let's check the api get all appointments we need an api by which we will be able to see all the appointment created by hospital get all appointment api is there so we need one more api that will be uh we have to pass the hospital id and based on the hospital id we will be getting the all the appointments created uh, currently api is not there but let me just quickly create it so i have created that api let's just see if that api works let's register one more hospital let's go to home page currently we have registered that uh, I think I have already registered. Let me just check. Let's check how many hospitals are there with the Gate Hall Hospital API. Mm, okay, Dravid Hospital is there, but the username and uh, password is not uh, is null. So let's create another hospital. Let's give. Dravid missing home contact number just a dummy mobile number we will add then owner Dravid contact number let's email id name just some random address I'm adding now the user user id Dravid and let's say password will be 223344. Let's click on register. I have got the error. Let's see, mobile number is not correct. Double nine, double nine, double nine, double nine, double nine. Let's see. Still, I'm getting the error. Let me check the error. Course error. Why I'm getting the course error? Let me just check. So actually, I was hitting the wrong API. So API endpoint was Practo. 
and here also I have changed. So now it should wait. Let's try to register. So you can see registration is success. Now let's try to log in with the Vedanta Hospital that we have earlier tried. So I'll click of login. Why is saying wrong credential? Let's get the credential from here. Get all hospital. So Vedant. And the password is 113822. Let's get that. Yeah, so we are logged in. Now in the appointment, once we load, the appointment page on the page load we should see all the appointments created by this particular hospital so we have one api for that let me check the id of this uh, hospital inspect so once we do the login we have stored the logged in user data over here so back to login hospital id is seven so if we go to the swagger we have one api that is get all up get appointments sorry gate all appointment by hospital id to this api we need to pass the hospital id so our hospital id is seven let's execute so currently only one record is there now this api we have to make so let's go to service and we have to create our api call so first before service first we have to add the constant also because every endpoint is coming from the constant so let me just copy paste this will be get underscore appointments by hospital and the url will be like this so we have to do this up till equal to then we just need to add the id so this will be over here so constant as it then in the hospital service we have to write one api call <clears throat> but api call is gate one only okay gate appointments by hospital and we will get an id over here so id data type will be number now this is going to be gate APAC also here we have to write the gate endpoint will be get hospital appointments by hospital id and we don't need to send the object so plus id we have to bind so that our url will be dynamic now this function we have to call in the appointment list. But before that, so we say like uh, there are two roles, either a super admin or the hospital. For currently I don't have any uh, record with the super admin, but I will create it. So if the user or what we can say, if the logged in role is super ID, Super admin. So for super admin, we will be doing the hard code thing that I will explain to you. But first we will do the hospital wise patient should be there. So here we will call get all appointments. Now this dot of hospital service. What is the appointment service? okay appointment service was there so instead of this we have to call this function in the appointment service because for the appointment we have created one service here it will be there now in appointment list appointment service dot get hospital get appointment by hospital and here we need to pass the logged in hospital id because we need to get the appointment for that particular hospital id only whatever the user whatever the hospital logged in we will only show the appointments created by him so for that we need to pass this object is there so whatever the logged in hospital id we have already stored that into this object hospital id so this only we will pass it over here then dot subscribe don't decade result colon api response model subscribe function and whatever the data we get that we need to store it also so here i will say appointment list colon any okay so without uh we we should not create the any but let's just see what data we are getting so these are the, the uh, fields we are getting so this is almost same just what else is there no nothing same just the appointment so this model we can use it over here let's initialize to empty and whatever the data we get that we are going to store into this variable 
So this will go over here. So this dot appointment list is equal to res dot data. So capital R is there. But on the page load, we need to call this function. So we have to in implement ng on init lifecycle hook. On init, then we have to implement that also. And once we implement, we need to write the ng on init. And in page and ng on init, we will call this function. So this dot appointment. And this function we will call once appointment is successfully created also means in this if condition. Now, whatever the data we get from the appointment that we are storing it over here. Now, this we will use on this call 3 to iterate. So now, in Angular 17, we have a for loop like this. So this you might have seen just the normal for loop what we used to do in a JavaScript or in normal programming language. That instead of ng4, you can use this for loop as well. So here you need to pass our variable name, then track by, like by which you need to track. That also you can specify. So here, this card is, sorry, this, whatever is going to be repeated, that we need to pass it over here. So whole call three is going to be repeated. So you can see whole call three, I have put it over here. So now in card title here, I will show the patient name. So item dot, let's say name, then mobile number, I will show it over here. Item, mobile number, then here we can show the narration if it there is anything. Um, dot narration, and here we can show appointment number. So item dot, do we have appointment number? Why do we don't, okay, so I think we don't have, but let's just say appointment time. Let's just comment this. Let's save and check if we are able to see the appointments created by that particular hospital. Let's save all. So on the page load now you will be you will get to see properly id is doing this id is nothing but so only one record was there let's add one more record let's say rahul mobile number mumbai let's just add 34 mail date today only time let's say 7 30 pm the narration something and book appointment appointment created and on the pay uh, once appointment is api call is success then in the success of that we have called another api so you can see rahul record and it is visible over here so this is how uh, we are logged in with vedant hospital so we can see all the appointments created by the vedant hospital now let's try to log in with another hospital now you can see after login also we are able to see this page we should handle that by navigating to the logout, uh, what we can say, home page. So here you can see we had the login button. So once user logged in, we have to navigate in to the home page. So private router object I'm creating. Router. And once user is logging off, so this dot router dot navigate by URL and we have to navigate to home. So this is also taken care of. So once user is on the appointment page or the patient list, once user clicks on the log off, he will redirect it to the home page, means the website. Now, so now we have to log in with the another hospital which we have created. Let's get that data. Get on hospital. So this is the login username. Let's see the password 113322. Login. So now you can see Dravid at the dummy.com is there. Now if we go to the appointment, here you can see we don't have any appointment yet. <clears throat> so now if we don't have any appointment, so we can show 
like no appointments are found by just adding an NGF condition. But let's just try to add one more uh, here. So let's say Rahul. Or let's say Ankit. Enter mobile number double seven double seven double seven double eight. Let's say Pune, age twenty three. This is first time. Mail, date. Let's say tomorrow's twelve. am let's some add some direction book appointment so now you can see over here we are passing the dynamic hospital id whatever the hospital is logged in that we are passing so here if we are logged in with the dravid we are only able to see the one entry of the appointment but if we log in with the vedan there we can see multiple entries because we in the let's try to open the another browser localhost 4200 and here we will try to log in with Vedant. So this credential, we will pass it over here. Login. So now in the appointment, if we are logged in with the Vedant, so you can see two appointments were created by them. But same thing in case of Dravid Hospital, only one, hosp one appointment is available over here. So this is how we have done. But let's say if we are logged in with the uh, super admin, but uh, currently I don't have any API for the super admin uh, uh, user or the uh, login separate API. But same login page we will use for the super admin as well. So I will tell you like how we can do that. So now in login button, on login button click, we are simply doing the API call. But for super admin, we don't have any uh, record for now. So let's just create an API call. Uh, let, let me just create a record which will be super admin. So let me just pause. So in I'm creating a record for the data from the database just for the super admin. So my database tables are under with the name Practo. So Practo Hospital. Just a, a super admin means just I'm creating a super admin record. So let's say hospital name will be super admin. Let it be everything as same username, super admin, password admin. Now, if the username is super admin, we will know like this is a super admin. Let's try to log in with this super admin first. Log up. If we log in with super admin and the password is admin, let's try to log in. Why it is coming string? Okay, so email email ID we are showing over there. So that is super admin. Let's try to log in again. Now you will be able to see the super admin over here. Now you can see if login logged in user is super admin. So if we go to the appointment page, I should be able to see all the booking of all my hospital whatever the hospital are registered with me, I should be able to see the appointments created by them because this is the super admin. So he should be able to see all the records. So now in appointment table, appointment component, we will just write a specific code for that specific user. Now, just like the gate all appointment, I will create one more API call. So first in the constant also we have to create so if you see the swagger, we have one more API that is gate all appointments. So that this API is used for getting all the appointments. So let me just try it out, execute. So here you can see we get the hospital name. So Dravid maternity wedding. So you can see for Vedant, we have two appointment and for Dravid, we just have one appointment. So this API we have to use. So this is the API endpoint. Let's add it in the constant. Let's make it get appointments. Now in the service also, we will just copy paste this function. Get appointments. We don't need to pass the ID. This is also not needed. And let's say get appointments. But the API call, the means from here we are passing. So if you see, 
if we do the gate all appointment now this extra thing we are getting so let's just add that in the model appointment so here also i'm adding the string data type let's initialize that with empty now here so just like this function i will create one more function now this function should be like this and this will be get appointment we don't need to pass if any parameter to this so now we have two function get hospital and get up get all appointment now on the page load we get the logged in data over in this variable so now we need to store into into, into a proper variable logged user data colon user so i have just created a variable and whatever the logged user data i have that i will store into this variable just the same line i will just copy paste over here but the whole thing not just the hospital id so whatever the data is there into the logo storage i'm storing that into this variable so now this variable i will use it in ng on in it so in if condition if this dot logged in data dot name so if username equal to equal to what is the username we had for this super admin if the username is super admin we will get to know like the logged in username is logged in user role is super admin so now we have to call this function over here but if the logged in username is get uh, by hospital means if the logged in user is hospital means other than super admin so in else we will call this function but once we book the appointment again the same code we have to just copy paste over here because once we book the appointment again we need to check like you know, what is the user role and everything so rather than doing this over here let's move this code or separate function now this function i will call it over here plus over here also now let's check if we are able to see all the records but if the logged in username is super admin we have to show the hospital name also so this same condition we have to use in the html also so the last was there now let's uncomment that and here this last tab will be visible in gif here we will show the hospital name but hospital name we will only show if the logged in user is super admin again we are using ng so we need to use common module so now you can see if you are using the for loop this for loop you don't have to use the uh, <clears throat> common module but if you are using the ng for then you need to import but still we are using ng we are you uh, we have to import the common module why it is giving error one black double quote is missing now here we need to show the hospital name so item dot hospital name so now this last anchor tag let's add text success so that it will be differential now in this browser we have logged in with the super admin so now here you can see we are able to see all the record of the all the, all the hospital vedant care has two appointment and dravid has only one appointment but if we go to another browser this is we are logged in with vedant so only particular appointments created by vedant hospital is visible and we are not able to see the hospital name also so this is how we hide and show some data based on the logged in user role but we haven't created the role but just by username we have done the same functionality so this is how we have done this so this was a whole application which i wanted to explain again some uh, patient 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 component is there 
So here again, you can use the API. Let me just tell you that API also. So again, what the same thing, get all appointment and the get all appointment by hospital ID. Same thing. If the username is super admin, we will use get all patient. If username is not super admin means hospital is logged in. So we will use this API. Sorry, this API, get all patient by hospital ID. Like this, we will be able to show the hospital also. So this is what I wanted to explain in this particular project. So same application or same behavior we have in the practice also. So that's it with this current video. I hope you are finding this helpful. Please do like and subscribe my channel.